I was a phys ed major in college, so I wanted to be a diver in the military. And so I became a salvage diver. I was a salvage diver for about 16 years. And then I went into ordnance logistics, or ammunition, uh, bullets, all the way up to uh, smart weapons. The Gulf War was, uh, the first Gulf War was the war I was in. Doing salvage work in a harbor where we were covered with the smoke from the burning oil rigs. It would not turn morning until 10 o'clock. My exposure was constant. It was difficult to ascertain as to whether it was doing anything to my body, but I think it did. In fact, I know it did. The strange symptoms came about at, uh, gee, it's hard to tell because there were so many of them. At the time I blew out my ears when I was diving, I was diving too fast, trying to catch up with someone, my diving partner that was not being a very good partner. And so I blew out my eardrum, loss of hearing, loss of smell, all these things, constipation, they all uh, were attributed to something other than Parkinson's because, shoot, I didn't know anybody with Parkinson's disease. That was for older people. Uh, tripping and falling at Huntington Beach. And that was 2011. Mary Paul said, hey, we need to go see somebody. Why don't you make a, an appointment and go see a neurologist? And I did, and that's when the neurologist said, hey, five, after five minutes, I'm not joking, after five minutes, this guy told me I had Parkinson's disease. One of the worst prognoses I could ever get, and I got it in five minutes. Not even a blood sample was taken. All I saw was my future in a wheelchair, slumped over, drooling, with my wife pushing me. As powerful of a gut punch that the diagnosis of Parkinson's can be, a great partner in Parkinson's is there to dust you off and help you get back up. If I cry, it's because I'm very emotional. Mary Paul is wonderful. She really has been my guiding light throughout all of this. She's my wife, my caregiver, my protector. She, she does it all. It's amazing to me. I'll say, Mary Paul, you need help with that? And she'll say, no, go, go exercise or do something that can help you with your disease. Without Mary Paul, I probably, I know I would be in a psychiatric ward. She's the one that gets me through the day and she's the one that makes sure I can sleep at night. We do not sleep in the same room for two reasons. He was not being honest with me and that he was starting to hallucinate. And if you're sleeping with someone that has Parkinson's and they're hallucinating, you get kicked and punched. I was afraid to sleep in the same room with him because during the hallucinations, he did not know who I was. And at one point was pushed up against a wall in the hospital and the police were called in. So it was just a terrifying experience to go through because you know it's not him, it's the Parkinson's. I would say my sense of safety has been taken away from me, but it's a good thing I'm brave. It takes brave people to deal with Parkinson's. But as we've gone through this disease now, over 10 years, it's manageable. Now, there's just a few things you need to do. Eat right. Mediterranean diet is the best diet. Exercise. And exercise is so important. Stretching in the morning, having a routine, having something accessible to you to where you can just get little snacks of exercise, if you will. Little snacks. Like go over and do push-ups against the wall or do push-ups on the counter. I love biking. I like boxing. I like uh, just sweating, period. I love to sweat phys ed major in college, so it kind of goes with my personality, I guess. And then there's a creative outlet that I really enjoy, which is photography. And I have found that people with Parkinson's, they become more creative. I capture nature in my photography. Macro photography, I really enjoy macro. And um, flowers, you know, flowers are alive. 
They've got energy to them. There's a vibration to them. And they're beautiful. Just like people with Parkinson's. And a lot of people with Parkinson's don't have the wherewithal, the money, the opportunities to do the things that they need to do to make their voice heard. So for anyone to ask us to do more than what we're doing is almost a put down because we're doing a lot just to stay alive, tell you the truth. HIV and the fight against cancer and the fight against heart disease. Everyone sees that as something that could possibly affect them. And so they want to fight that. They want to put their resources to it. And you have able-bodied people who are willing to do that. Jim is doing what he needs to do to fight the disease. And I'm doing everything I can do to protect Jim. A fight against Parkinson's has to be a whole community that fights against it. Because I believe that people are unaware how close that disease is to knocking on their own door. I was genuinely touched by the story of Jim Cosper and his wife, Mary Paul. They described how the initial diagnosis, made literally after five minutes, hit them like a brick. This was the worst possible card I could have been dealt, is what Jim said. I could already see my future crumble, see myself being pushed around in a wheelchair by my wife, drooling. But in reality, I think their story is about the strength that couples can develop in trying to cope with Parkinson's. The story of Jim and Mary Paul is clear. This disease doesn't just hit the affected individual. It affects everyone around you, your spouse, your friends, your family, your children. And these same near ones can play a crucial role in the overall management of Parkinson's. Jim literally says, without Mary Paul, I would have been lost. And I recognize this from my own daily clinical practice where I see beautiful examples like this couple who support each other to the best of their abilities so that despite all the challenges that come with Parkinson's, people can lead as good as possible a meaningful life despite Parkinson's disease.